This was the equation I had asked you to balance. What's the first step we can do? We draw boxes around each element or compound. The purpose of these boxes is to make sure that you don't change anything inside the boxes. Whatever you want to multiply, you do it to the entire box and not just one particular element. Next, we populate this table. In the first column, we write down the different elements involved in the reaction. And then in these two columns, we write the number of atoms each element has on each side of the equation. Why don't you try filling up this table? Which are the elements or atoms present in the equation? Iron, hydrogen and oxygen, that's right. If you've not tried it yet, try filling up these two cells for each element. This is how the table would look. You see that iron and oxygen are not balanced in this equation. So the important question is, which atom should we start balancing first? Should it be iron or should it be oxygen? That's where the third step comes in. Look for the atom which is maximum in number on any side. If we look at this table, the maximum number is 4 and it's on the right. Oxygen in this compound has 4 atoms. So our first aim will be to balance the oxygen atoms. On the right, it's 4 and on the left, it's 1. So to balance the number of oxygen atoms, we multiply this compound with 4. So the number of oxygen atoms on each side is 4 now. This is a partly balanced chemical equation. But the iron and hydrogen atoms are not balanced now. When we multiplied this compound with 4, the number of hydrogen atoms on the left became 8 and that on the right is still 2. As the number of hydrogen atoms is 8, let's proceed with balancing the hydrogen atoms next. As it's 8 on the left and 2 on the right, we multiply the hydrogen on the right with 4. Is the equation balanced now? The number of oxygen atoms on each side is 4 and the number of hydrogen atoms on each side is 8. And what about iron atoms? It's 1 on the left and 3 on the right. So the equation is just partly balanced. So to equalize the Fe atoms, we multiply Fe on the left with 3. Is the equation balanced now? Yes, it is. The number of atoms of each element is equal on both sides of the equation. 3 of iron on each side, 8 of hydrogen on each side and 4 of oxygen on each side. You'd have noticed that there are no fixed steps to balance a chemical equation. We just try balancing each atom at a time, which is why it's called a hidden trial method. We make trials to balance the equation. Though we've balanced the chemical equation, there's one additional thing we can do. We can write symbols of the physical states of each reactant and product. What do I mean by this? There are four main states of the reactants and products. Gaseous, liquid, aqueous and solid. We know these three, but what's aqueous? The word aqueous is written if the reactant or product is present as a solution in water. So the balanced equation we got can be written like this. This clearly gives us more information about the equation or reaction. These two compounds are in solid state and notice that G is written next to water. It means that water was used in the form of steam in this reaction. And sometimes there are conditions under which the reaction occurs. Conditions like temperature and pressure are written above or below the arrow. So if two reactants A and B react at 100 degrees Celsius to give C and D, it is written like this. If the reaction requires sunlight, it can be written like this. Would you like to balance a couple of chemical equations by yourself? Here you go. Tell us your answers in the comment section below.